storm surge is the reason coastal communities are usually the first to evacuate. Storm surge can cause water levels to rise quickly and flood large areas, sometimes in just a matter of minutes. Basically, a storm's winds are pushing water on shore. How much comes in depends on the storm's intensity, speed, size, how it's positioned along the coast, so many different factors go into it. It can be the deadliest part of a storm. Just six inches of fast moving flood water can knock you off your feet, and two feet of rushing water can carry away most vehicles, including pickups and SUVs. At five to seven feet, it can flood lower levels of homes. You'll want to go to your second floor or even the roof. A 12 to 15 foot storm surge puts most single floor homes and businesses under water. And 15 to 20 foot surge can cover two story homes and businesses. Storm surge can occur before, during and after the center of the storm has passed. It's important to know you don't have to live in a floodplain to experience storm surge from a storm. Those coastal communities are usually the first to evacuate because of the storm surge. But how do you know when to evacuate? We have learned a lot of lessons over the last few years, like from Hurricane Rita back in 2005. We saw issues when everyone hit the road at once ahead of the storm. The gridlock caused serious problems and many people ran out of gas while waiting in the traffic. Stephanie Simmons maps out when you should expect to leave your house and what you need to pack in your car before you hit the road. When a hurricane is on the horizon, one of the first questions we hear is, will we be told to evacuate? It happened last year with Hurricane Laura, and it could happen again this year. So it's important you know where your home falls on our region's evacuation plan. For evacuations, we have a zip code map. The color-coded map set up to help you know when to go and whether you're part of the first group that needs to get out. Emily Black with TxDOT says it comes down to where you live. The people that are going to be impacted by storm surge need the ability to safety, safely evacuate first. We ask for people who are in the more northern areas, if they are trying to evacuate because they are afraid of power outages um, or things like that, that they wait until after the storm. In the event authorities do order the evacuation, TxDOT has a number of tools to help speed up the process. One way is with contraflow. That's when all inbound lanes of a freeway are reversed to flow outbound. Contraflow is used to help move citizens safely and efficiently out of harm's way during a large scale evacuation. State and local leaders, along with emergency operation personnel, make the call. They can send traffic flowing in reverse on I-10, I-45, 290, and the East Tex Freeway, basically pushing people to San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, and East Texas. The one and only time ContraFlow was instituted was for Hurricane Rita in 2005. A ContraFlow plan was created and put into action within hours um, in a TxDOT office. Did you have to tweak any of your plans from Rita? Since Hurricane Rita, we've actually invested in a whole lot of technology that help us see the evacuation as it's happening. Um, and we're able to clock how fast the vehicles are moving so we can track how um, you know successful the evacuation is being. Another TxDOT plan, adding extra lanes. During any major official evacuation, um, you've seen those hurricane symbols on the shoulders of some of our major freeways. Those are evacu lanes, and those symbols mean that during an official evacuation, those shoulder lanes with the symbols on them can be used as evacuation, additional evacuation lane. In the event an evacuation is ordered, it's important you're prepared and your car is packed with emergency essentials. A paper map of evacuation routes in case GPS goes out, non-perishable food, water, blankets, a phone charger that doesn't require electricity, jumper cables, and a full tank of gas. One of the most important tools you need, insurance. Being prepared is always better than trying to scramble and catch up after a disaster. But it's more than just homeowner's insurance. What you need to do now to make sure you're covered before a potential storm hits. Pets are part of the family, so make a disaster plan for them now. Put together a pet disaster kit. Include in it food, water, medication, a pet carrier, leash, and a collar with an ID with current contact information on it in case you get separated from your pet. 
It's also a good idea to take a selfie with the animal to prove ownership in case a lost pet is found. And if you have to evacuate, take your pet. If conditions are unsafe for you, they are unsafe for pets as well. Some shelters do not allow animals, so make temporary housing arrangements well before a storm hits.